Hello from the Fortronics YouTube channel and welcome to using solid state relays to route electrical signals and this is part three in our solid state switching series. Before I get started, I'll just mention, please check me out on Patreon where you can access exclusive Forstronics content, including content from this video series. And if you like what you see here, please hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, let's get started. Okay, this is part three. In part one, I went over N and P channel MOSFETs and using them as a switch to route signals. In part two, we went over the TRIAC, which is made for switching AC signals, and we looked how to use it to switch AC line power. And now in part three, we're gonna cover solid state relays or SSRs. We'll cover what they are, we'll compare them to mechanical relays, we'll talk about the two main types of architectures, and then we'll look at the specs for one of them and a demo of how we implemented it. All right, this is just showing you what we have on Patreon from this video series, as well as the mechanical relay series. We have the Forstronics wireless switch design. So on Patreon, you can access the design files for this, the Gerber files, the bomb, PDFs of the schematics, an example Arduino cloud code for controlling this wirelessly from the cloud to control your switches. And this has the ability to handle DC and AC. It has mechanical and solid state switches. So if you're interested, Check this out on Patreon. All right, so what are solid state relays? Solid state relays are solid state based devices that are configured to act and compete with mechanical relays. So what's nice about solid state relays compared to just using a single MOSFET as a switch is they can actually handle DC signals and AC signals. Their control signal that's used to control the relay, open and close it, is isolated from the relay or the switching signal, which is not the case with you know, N-channel MOSFETs or P-channel MOSFETs. And what's nice is you can use a very low power signal to control high power or to switch high power signals. Just like mechanical relays, they're available in common switch configurations, so single pull, single throw, you can get them in form A, which is normally open, or form B, which is normally closed. You have single pole double throw in form C. You have multiple solid state relays combined in a single IC package. So various configurations available just like mechanical relays. A solid state relay is made up of two main circuit parts. The first is the optocoupler. So the idea is they typically have some type of LED in there and sending a control signal through the, the LED inside the solid state relay actuates the solid state switching device. And so that's the second part of the design is the solid state switching devices. And you'll find two main types of architectures for solid state relays when you talk about the switching part of them. And I'll cover both of them in this tutorial. So optocoupler section that isolates the control signal and then the optocoupler creates a optical signal that biases the solid state devices to either open the switch or close the switch. Okay, I've done the comparison of solid state switching devices to mechanical relays, but solid state relays are sort of their own beast. And so they're made to compete or take the place of mechanical relays in general. So I wanted to do a comparison of solid state relays to mechanical relays. The pros of solid state relays compared to mechanical relays is there's no hot switching and there's no switch bounce. And if you're not familiar with those terms, I cover them in my mechanical relay series. They also can have a longer cycle life if you use them within spec because they have no moving mechanical parts. They're gonna have a smaller footprint than a mechanical relay. And when I say smaller footprint, if you take a solid state relay and a mechanical relay that can have this sort of the same power handling capabilities, the solid state relay is typically gonna be smaller. You also don't need many supporting components to control a solid state relay. And when I say control, it means actuate, open or close the solid state relay. They switch faster than mechanical relays and there's no flyback current because you have no magnetic coil or magnetic field. And once again, if you're not familiar with flyback, check out my mechanical relay tutorial series. The downsides of solid state relays compared to mechanical relays is they are typically higher cost. You know, you're getting a highly integrated IC in a small package that can control large high powered signals. So they're not cheap. And also there's no air gap isolation between the switching signals. So unlike a mechanical relay that when it's open, you have air between the two poles of the switch. So no current can flow. 
but a solid state relay is made up of solid state devices. So you never get an air gap between your switching signals. You just get semiconductor material between them and that can lead to leakage current. Okay, let's talk about the two main types of switching architectures for solid state relays. And the first is MOSFETs. And I sort of call it back-to-back -back MOSFETs. So you'll typically see this with two N-channel MOSFETs with their sources connected together and their drains connected to the two poles of the switch if we're talking about you know, a single pole, single throw switch. So in the diagram below, you can see one and two is meant to be the control signal. So if we force the right amount of current through the internal LED, that will forward bias our MOSFETs, allowing current to flow in both directions. Now it's important to note though, the, what, the reason you have back-to-back -back MOSFETs is to support current flowing in either direction. So let's say I have a 12 volt DC signal connected to four, and then I have some load on three. If I send a control signal, what happens is because there's a positive voltage on the drain of the top MOSFET and no signal on the source, when the LED is actuated, that means this MOSFET turns on or acts like a closed switch or short and current can flow. But with three, because you have nothing connected, let's say zero volts connected to pin three, this MOSFET's not gonna turn on, but you have this diode here that will forward bias when the signal flows from four through the biased MOSFET through the diode to three. And then of course, if you want current to flow the opposite direction, the opposite happens. The bottom end channel MOSFET is forward biased to act like a closed switch, and then the signal flows through the diode. So that's why they use back-to-back -back MOSFETs, is so you can have current flow in both directions, just like a mechanical relay. And these are very easy to control, it's actually a similar setup than a mechanical, as a mechanical relay, but you have no flyback diode. So here I'm showing VCC, which could be five volts, it could be 3.3 volts. And then we have this current limiting resistor. And basically you wanna set this resistor value based on what the specs are for the solid state relay you're using. The one for the demo we're gonna look at later only requires two milliamps. So you would set this to get two milliamps based on the value of VCC, set this resistor. And then we could use a microcontroller pin to basic and connect it to an N-channel MOSFET that's connected to pin two, the drain, and then the source is connected to ground. And if you're not familiar with MOSFETs, you know, check out my tutorial for part one of this series. But we'll turn this MOSFET on just like we were turning them on inside the chip and this creates a closed switch so we can get current to flow through the LED. A lot of these SCRs require such little current that you may not need to use VCC and a MOSFET. You may be able to get away with just a current limiting resistor here and a digital pin from a microcontroller as long as that microcontroller can source enough current. Now for our demo, that's what we're gonna do because in our demo, the solid state relay only requires two milliamps and the ASP32 pin can source that many. So we just have to have a resistor, a digital pin, and then pin two is connected to ground. So more than one way to actuate this and a lot of times what you, the method you choose is based on how much current is required for the diode or the LED, I should say. And once again, that's in the data sheet for whatever solid state relay you're using. The second type of architecture is a triac. So if you watch part two of this series, you'll know triacs are used to switch AC and they typically can't switch DC. So typically when you see a solid state relay with a triac based architecture, it can only handle AC signals. So below we have a similar diagram, right? So if we force current through A2 to A1, we're gonna actuate this drive IC that's gonna, also, that's gonna create an optical signal to control our drive circuit for the triac. Once again, the whole point here is we want to isolate our DC low power circuit that's used to control the solid state relay from our high powered AC signal. So that's why we have the optocoupler. Now, if you watched part two, you'll know that a triac is two parallel SCRs that are connected in opposite directions to allow current to flow in either directions. And so this drive circuit handles the biasing based on if the voltage is high at L1, when I say high, I mean positive or negative. As an example, I wanted to pull out a model number for a 
triac based high powered solid state relay. So here's an example model number that can handle up to 400 volts AC and that's RMS and 50 volts AC RMS. So it can handle a lot of power and it only needs a drive current from four to 20 milliamps. But notice it's not cheap, it's almost $200. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at the demo, but I wanna first show you the solid state relay I'm gonna use in the demo. So this is a lower power solid state relay. It's a MOSFET based relay, not a TRIAC based relay, so it can handle DC and AC. And if we look at the specs, it can handle 60 volts and 400 milliamps RMS. It's single pole, but it's normally closed. So it's a form B single pole, single throw relay. Normally closed means that with no signal applied to the control circuit, it's going to be closed. To open it, you have to apply the signal to the control circuit. And a Form A solid state relay is the opposite. And look, as I mentioned before, all you need is 2 milliamps to actuate or open this relay because it's a Form B relay. So here's the video for our demo. Here, right here, you can see the relay, the solid state relay I just showed for the data sheet. It's meant to be PCB mounted, but I soldered some pins on it so it can be put in a breadboard. In the back is two resistors, 600 ohms, to basically serve as current limiting for a 3.3 volt signal. So I have a digital microcontroller pin that's gonna be either zero volts, and that'll make this solid state relay closed, or it's gonna be 3.3 volts, and you'll get current through the internal LED, which will open this solid state relay. And then closer to us, the other two pins for the solid state relay are the two poles of the switch. And I have an AC signal coming from my signal generator, which I'll show in a second. And then I have a current limiting resistor that connects to two LEDs. And these LEDs are connected in opposite directions. So one will light up when the AC signal is positive voltage and the other will light up when it's a negative voltage. And I wanted to, to do this so I can show that we get current flowing in both directions with a solid state relay. Okay, there's the circuit. I'm gonna zoom out. And this is actually the Forstronics wireless switchboard where you can access the exclusive content for this board on Patreon. So this has an ESP32, it has mechanical relays, solid state. And in Patreon, on Patreon, you can access all the design files, the Arduino cloud code, so on and so forth. So I'm using some of the spare pins and the ground connection from here to control the solid state relay. Okay, you can see the LED on the board is on, so it shows that it's on. There's my connection for my signal generator. This is the power supply powering the Forstronics wireless switchboard. And then up here is gonna be my signal generator. So what I do is I have it set for a square wave and the square wave goes positive and then negative voltage. And I have it for a one hertz frequency. So that means every second the cycle repeats. So the voltage is gonna be positive for a half second and negative for a half second. The amplitude is six volts peak to peak, which means for our positive square wave, we're gonna get three volts positive, and then for our negative going square wave, we'll get negative three volts, and that equals six volts peak to peak. So this is on right now, but our solid state relay is actuated and open, so we're not getting any AC signal through to our LEDs. So I'm gonna back off to my, this is what you're looking at is, if you're not familiar with it, is the Arduino IoT cloud interface, which I have videos of that as well. And you're looking at my simple dashboard for controlling the switches on the wireless switchboard. Now I use this for my Patreon video, but what I did for this demo is I added another switch, and this is a cloud-based switch, for controlling the Form B switch. And this is, all this switch does is it, when it's on, it creates a positive signal at that ESP32 digital pin, and when it's off, it's a negative signal. Now notice, since we didn't see the LEDs lighting up, it's because I have the switch on. This is a Form B switch, so with the 3.3 volts and the LED on, the switch should be open. So now I'm gonna close the switch by turning it off. And notice we have our LEDs flashing from our AC signal. Now I'm gonna turn it on again, you'll see it go off, and then I'll turn it on again, and there it is. So easy to control, all I'm doing is using a simple 
microcontroller pin and two resistors, but I could have used one resistor to control the solid state relay. And you can see it can handle AC signals as well as DC. Okay, that's it for using solid state relays to route electrical signals. In part four of the solid state switching series, we'll look at solid state MUX ICs. If you have any questions from the video, please use the comment section. And if you have anything to add, please use the comment section. Thank you for watching and I'll see you back for part four.